Well, good afternoon again, and happy Wednesday to all of my family at Desert Foothills. I uh, hope your week is uh, going well, and uh, amongst everything that's happening, I uh, just hope you and I could still have this chance today to be able to go to the Lord and be able to hear from His Word. Uh, again, wherever you find yourself at today, uh, thank you for being able to join us. Typically tonight, uh, as it would be Wednesday, We'd be getting together for our midweek services. This would actually be our last uh, midweek service that we have. Uh, we'd be starting Holy Week uh, this next week, and we look forward to still doing that, to celebrating uh, Palm Sunday uh, in just a few days from now, and going on from there and looking at all our Lord does and has provided for us. Uh, but with that, I just thought we could do just a quick little mini-sermon again today, uh, focused on that uh, theme that we've been going through, uh, preparing our hearts in this time of Lent, of looking at the gospel in seven words, and looking at seven words that could maybe change our lives and helping prepare us for that which is yet to come, and also help us in preparing uh, to be the best disciples possible and sharing the good news that God has given to us. So the scripture text we're going to start with for today comes from the book of 1 Peter chapter 3. Uh, it's some familiar words that we actually started our first Lent service out with, and we're just going to conclude a couple other verses. So 1 Peter chapter 3, and I'm going to read from uh, verses 13, 14, and the first part of 15. Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled, but in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. How great are those opening words. Uh, telling us to not only be prepared to have this defense or to have this answer, but God sharing with each of you and with me today that there's this hope that is literally in us, uh, that Christ lives in us and that Christ lives through us, that as his disciples sharing this great gospel message, we have this privilege of knowing of the salvation that is not only yet to come, but the salvation that we get to live in today. Uh, when Peter writes these words, he writes them to a group of people who are truly in need of hearing them. Uh, probably like a group of people that we are today. A group of people that um, are suffering in a lot of different venues, if you will, and need to be able to remain strong in the Lord's Word, uh, even during these times of suffering, or especially in these times of suffering. It's so funny to hear Peter say those words, right? Be prepared to give an answer for anybody who asks you, uh, because think about the events that we will summarize in a, just a week from now, is we get to the time of looking at Monday, Thursday, of looking at Good Friday. I think about the text of Matthew chapter uh, 26 when Jesus has been arrested. Uh, he is being pulled away. Uh, Peter is following along and people begin to ask him, didn't I, I see you? Aren't you the one? Surely, I, I know you are one of his followers. And we hear that first time, no, no, I'm not him. And that second time, you have me confused with another and the third. Man, I, I am not him with disdain. And then we hear that rooster crow. Three times, uh, Peter denies not only knowing who Jesus is or being with him, but being his follower of Christ. He's worried. He's scared. He, too, is suffering. And throughout this Lent season, we've been talking about, you know, how do we make sure that we today in our day and age, 2,000 years later, when we face the same situation that Peter is facing, uh, maybe in uh, a very similar context, maybe it is, is a different context, one way or the other, it doesn't even matter. Are we prepared to be able to give an answer? Are we prepared to be able to give a defense? And to be truthful, there's no one correct way of summarizing the gospel. There's a lot of different things that we can share uh, and speak unto people and do for people around us to show them who Christ is in our life. Uh, and, you know, Peter isn't somebody who necessarily fails 
all the time. He has many successes as well. Uh, in the book of Matthew, chapter 16, uh, Peter gives a wonderful answer. Actually, let me just read that for us real quick. If you want to look with me, it's uh, Matthew chapter 16, and if I'm right, it should begin at verse 13. Let's see here. Yeah, uh, Peter confesses that Jesus is the Christ. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Not everybody else. Who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. What a great response. He could have said um, probably a few different things there at least. When somebody asks you who Christ is, uh, you can probably share a few different things at least. Again, I don't think there's one perfect answer. There's not one uh, precise summarization of seven words that's going to uh, convert everybody around you the same or share the love of Christ with them the same. Uh, we should be particular about our words. We should be prepared, but we should be creative and also read the situations that are around us. Uh, I was walking down the street uh, here the other day, just taking uh, a quick little stroll around the block with my wife and daughter and our little dog. And as we came down the sidewalk, I noticed uh, that there were some uh, kids that had drawn all over their driveway and all over the, the sidewalk with chalk. I've noticed a lot of kids in the neighborhood doing that recently. It's actually super refreshing to see them out there. Uh, and as we were going along, it was a household that must have had uh, just a ton of uh, girls, just a whole bunch of little daughters in it. Because I came to the first one and there was a picture of a, a rainbow. And then I walked down a little further and another step and there's this picture of this unicorn and I take one more glance and there's this picture of a, a rainbow or excuse me, a butterfly that was there. Those were the three images, uh, butterfly, rainbow, unicorn. And I take one more step and there's uh, another picture there and I can only assume that they have a boy because there's a uh, chalk outline drawn there uh, like you would see at a crime scene and they fit together uh, very uniquely, let me put it that way. But then next to that, uh, was a little sign that somebody had written that said, God is in control. God is in control. And maybe out of all those pictures that were there, uh, that was the one that stood out to me the most. And how would you summarize the gospel for your neighbors right now in this moment? Maybe if you were to write a chalk message on the outside of your driveway there, or on your sidewalk, or in the street for others to be able to see, how would you summarize the gospel? And maybe this isn't something just hypothetical for us to do this week. Uh, maybe it's something we can actually put into practice. Uh, maybe it's a Bible verse that you have to be able to share that's uplifting. Maybe it is simply the words that God is in control. Uh, maybe you can take the practices of these past uh, several weeks in this time of Lent and come up with your own seven words to be able to, to share with people around you of what it means to know that we are God's Easter people, uh, that we live these lives of disciples who know what Christ has done for us and have been given, again, the privilege to be able to share this great news with others. And so today I'll close with the seven words that I came up with, uh, seven words that I think truly express the, the gospel, and I wrote this down, uh, Christ is risen, he raises us too. Christ is risen, he raises us too. Wherever you are at today, again, whatever you are facing, know that people around you are going through the exact same thing, uh, that they need to hear these words. That our God is still, always has been, and always will be in control. I promise you can take that to the bank today. Don't take it from me. Don't take it from Pastor Mark. Don't take it just from our congregation. Uh, take it from God himself, the one who sent his one and only son to live, to die, and to rise again just for you. With that, we conclude today, and I look forward to spending more time with you online and soon, uh, one day in person. It will happen, I promise you people. All right, love you guys. Blessings.